Good morning, everyone. This is Aggie with HIPAA Roofing, and we're here on a roof inspection in Melbourne. I'm here with Peller. We're about to go up on the roof and do a quick uh, re-measurement of our aerial view. And also, let's go over the basics of what is required for a roof inspection, especially coming up for the hurricane season, and what we come across on a roof inspection. So if you see this message, make sure to share. Let's go. We just safely climbed the ladder, and now we're here on the top of the roof. What Peller's doing is she's doing her photos of the roof. Hey, uh, we're also inspecting every part of this roof to make sure we cover the basics for our customer. We do video, we do pictures. We want this customer to see what we're seeing so they understand what they're getting as value for their roof inspection and for their estimates. Uh, we have some uh, dish, dishes here from DirecTV that we're going to be getting rid of and I'll explain why uh, dish, dishes on roofs are not a good idea, folks. Uh, they make me, they give me heartburn. <laughs> There's a repair that was done a couple years ago. Uh, this roof has definitely exceeded its life expectancy, so this person's got its value out of it. There's some repair work done on the ridge here. So we inspect these roofs and we like to walk the decking because we're checking for rotted wood. We're checking for the integrity of the roof because when we do a re-roof, uh, we are making sure that we replace any rotted wood, but if there's uh, good decking, we leave it. But it's important to understand what we're going to be dealing with, and that's why we have to do these roof inspections. Why just getting a roof estimate mailed to you and not having someone come out um, and, and meeting with you is really not a good idea. Uh, these uh, construction uh, projects, especially with roofing, require a lot of detail and also expectations. So, if you don't understand your scope of work, then uh, it's a lot of customers are not happy and that's why this industry of roofing is uh, really bad with reviews. So with that being said, if you are uh, a homeowner here in Brevard County or Indian River, make sure to reach out to us for a roof inspection. It's complimentary. We have our hurricane season coming up June 1st. So again, if your roof's in great shape and uh, it, it, maybe you had it done a couple years ago, uh, maybe it is older. If the decking's in good shape and the shingles are going to hold down, you may, be, you may be able to hold over another year with your current roof. If you're not sure if you have storm damage or if your roof's going to make it through the next hurricane season, this is where roof inspection will pay off. So uh, right now uh, in Florida, we're, we're going to seeing roofing uh, come and go, especially with uh, roofing companies. It's important to get a good quality uh, roof that will sustain its life. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of customers think that all of us roofers do the same work off of the same product uh, and underlayment and uh, installation. We don't, especially for those that are storm chasers, uh, somebody that maybe just started. A lot of them are former roofers that work elsewhere, started their own roofing company. Uh, they're looking to make a quick buck, for a quick profit. Um, it's not a good idea because eventually when they are priced out of the market and they uh, lose and they uh, lose their business, then the, that homeowner's on their own with their roof. Uh, I'm gonna go over some uh, other basics to look out for with a, a roof inspection. So if you see this video, please share. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. I'm more than happy to help our fellow customers in Brevard County. Thank you for watching HIPAA Roofing's Roof Inspection. So Peller is adding to my video sequence here. Peller, what are you seeing with this roof so far and what is your prognosis recommendations hey good morning guys how are you so um, we did ask the homeowner and we do have the ability to pull permits and find out when the roof went on um, in Florida a shingle roof really doesn't get to exceed its lifetime ever <laughs> um, it gets worn out if you look down here on the deck you can see how much granular lossage we have so right now we're actually staring at the matting um, something else to look at is our customer has done multiple repairs we have a major repair here. Right As you can see, this is a newer shingle. This is where the repair took place. They came all the way up. It's probably somewhere here in this little uh, valley area. There's a little uh, underlying part of the roof here. So in this valley transition- areas tend to have problems, Pella, right? Um, they do. And uh, so that? what he has here is his gutter is running backwards. This water, excessive water is traveling the all the way down. So this slope is draining right onto the roof. Um, this is very poorly done. It is traveling onto there, but it's what it's done is it's compromised this area um, He has also several other areas that have been repaired on the uh, southern side of this slope 
in Florida is where most of our exposure is. So you'll see this entire deck. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. This, all these shingles are really worn. Uh, here's another repair. Uh, what we have here, definitely What's bad sign. is that we have architectural replaced with retab. Yes, that is correct. That is um, weird. As we also look right here on each of the hips, these are an improper install uh, to save money. A lot of builders do this um, when you're re-roofed or roofed. Um, this is his original roof, I believe. This is a three tab that's been cut on the hip to, uh, to as, your, uh, as your shingle, and that's improper. If he has an architectural, he should have the proper hip and ridge for that, so he doesn't. But we do have a three tab here, and as you can see, these are still left behind from the original tarp. Oh my gosh. Uh, that was covering Weekend. his damage. So this could be quite possibly storm damage. Um, he's probably got money. He probably just patched it up. But here's also another anchor a fastener in which that tarp was held. So what does that really mean to us? Well, that's not been taken care of properly. Uh, that is a path for water to get in. So as small as a nail, water can travel into that. He has random single um, repairs as well. If we go down here, I just want to show you one of the repairs. Uh, people will do the darndest things to repair their roof. And we understand it. Sometimes it's a budget and a lot of people don't understand the complexity of repairs. So a silicone definitely is good if we have a nail pop, which was done here. It has stayed. But what we have in here is three nail pops. Um, Foliage, folks, is bad for your roof. So he had some trees um, up on his roof. They've worn down the shingles. This looks like that there was a former bracket here. Now this roof already has two satellite dishes and another bracket in the back. So this would be four actually on this roof. This is stuffed with some type of a material. It's uh, not even a caulk. I mean, it's like literally this little fuzzy things. It almost looks like cigarette butts. I don't even know. Yeah. But anyways, that's another repair. And then we have uh, another single one here. Again, another three tab has been put in there. As you can see from this valley, the water's traveling down. What is um, this? Well, it looks like that there's damage to the gutter. However, oh, yeah. I think the homeowner might have, uh, if, if a tree hasn't landed here, which would there be greater damage here, uh, maybe they've tried to manipulate this gutter to get this amount of water traveling down into here. I'm not sure. sure. We'll have to check and see if maybe there was a tree, but this is damage to this particular gutter. Doesn't even come down on this slope, but there's a lot of water traveling into here. So uh, your guess is, is as good as mine. It could be any game. And as we can see here, the amount of wear and tear, this is the mat. It's like potato chips. It's just, uh, we're just staring at the tar right now and fiberglass. Yep. When you're at this point, you know, even down from the ground, homeowners think my roof looks good, my roof looks good. But when you get up onto the roof, and you really get a close examination, which everybody, you should have a close examination. You should have photographs and or video. Should be brought down to you so that you can see what's really happening on your roof and understand we are before hurricane season. Now is the time to have those healthy roof checkups. See what you're dealing with. See what you're gonna be in store for. Preparation is key. Excellent. And one last note, uh, what's the difference between a three tab, a shingle and a architectural? Yeah, so the three tab, uh, we don't even install them anymore from what I understand the state of Florida. Uh, they're, they're not even making them uh, to install. The protection is about 60 miles an hour. Um, those were in high wind velocity zone. So that's really not conducive to our environment. Uh, the three tab has got the dragon tooth and the shim. So it's almost like two shingles put into one. You've got double the protection. It's typically a 30, uh, 30 year product. And what it'll give you is about up to 120 to 130 miles an hour. Depends on what manufacturer you go with. We happen to install certain teed. It's actually made for the Southeastern region of Florida. So made to withstand high heat, high wind. And that's architectural. Yep. Uh, color lock, uh, algae guards. So, uh, I don't work for certainty, but uh, it's a great product and that's what we carry. So it's our, our environment. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up uh, yep. with this video so we can finish this roof inspection and go over some great options. Thanks for joining.